Okay, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order at this time. Uh, confirmation at uh, with the appropriate meeting notice. Yes. Okay. Uh, approval of agenda. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we have the agenda. Uh, approval of a minutes from March 16th and March 28th. I think we'll do those together if we could have a motion. I'll make the motion to approve the minutes of March 16th and March 28th. I'll second that. Okay, we have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is passed. Okay, any public participation at this time? Okay. All right, then we'll move on to old business with an update regarding the Union Local 580 contract. Chief Parker. Good evening. Um, we have, I myself, um, and a couple of members from the uh, Fire Commission have met with uh, a Union Local 580. Um, I myself have met with them a couple of different times. Um, for the most part, the uh, the union contract is, I would say, approximately 85-90% completed. Uh, we have a couple of things that we have to uh, talk about um, in regards to uh, pay for the upcoming years. Um, and we uh, put together a, a page a pay wage scale for, for the future. Um, whether or not that may happen or may not happen is just something that we we plan for in case it does. Um, basically, that is increments of like a five year, uh, five, 10, 15, 20 year, and then obviously um, different pay steps for people with uh, uh, higher you know, education, more certifications and things like that. So um, that will be presented to our, the staff meeting that we have on the 29th. Um, we'll let uh, the folks that will be there look at it. Um, if there's any comments, questions, or concerns, we'll get that taken care of, and it'll be hopefully presented to the Fire Commission at the May meeting. Um, any questions as far as that goes? Okay. Uh, we need the, until the May meeting then, uh, before we can vote to send it on to our lawyer, because we have uh, several reviews that need to be taken by Brooke to look at that. John? And I did meet with uh, the chief and representatives from the 580, and John had worked on the contract prior to this, so he has a lot of background information to bring to the table, uh, talk about the prior work on the contract, and then things that needed to be completed before uh, it's done. So I, if you have anything to add, John, that would be fine. Nothing really to add. Um, thank you for working with uh, all the respective representatives to make it happen because there's a lot that goes into that contract and mm -hmm. a lot of it is specific to our facility um, and how the policies govern the facility and, and the benefits. So other than that, no. Anybody, anybody else have any questions? Or? Um, I just have one thing. I don't know if that will uh, re be required to have a, a closed session on the, the language and the possibility of a like a yearly uh, increase in pay or um, uh, as far as the increases um, for as long as the contract lasts. So I don't know if that will be a closed session item or not. So it's something for you guys to decide. Well, I'm not sure that wages alone would justify a closed session, okay. but the contract in general is, is, a, a, is a negotiation. Correct. So as a whole, the contract is a negotiation, mm -hmm. which is probably warrants a closed session for that purpose. Um, and I'm sure at that time we'll also be dis discussing wages, but the commitment to any wage adjustments would ultimately probably be part of a public meeting, mm -hmm. um, but the negotiating part of that might not be okay. you know, prior. But that's how I see it. I don't know how everybody else sees it. Would you negotiate before the lawyer looked at it? Or after? I, okay. I don't know. So we wouldn't necessarily do it in the May meeting, but. 
Yeah, I think well, in, in this case, the best situation would be to take the document, review it as a commission prior to it, look at where other discrepancies may lie to then um, discuss that in closed session with staff and make sure that um, the administration feels that it's it's clear and all the necessary documents are included. And then we'll take that to the attorney to review. Um, and in that process, we can talk about the wage opportunities if there, if there are ways that we can improve the wages. But the ultimate vote would be from the commission at probably a later date to say we're going to approve these wages increase, if that makes sense. Yeah, we'd certainly like to, to make it as transparent as possible and have all the discussion out in the open. Um, but I think that's ultimately where the wage thing is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a public um, review of that. But the sensitive negotiations of getting there is probably right. uh, closed. Um, and could you just remind me, Chief, the union local 580, mm -hmm. currently that is both Janesville and Edgerton? Correct, or? yeah, Edgerton is a, um, a, a part of that. Okay. Um, they do not have the same contracts. They're quite a bit different in, in between the two. Um, I would say the Milton contract is going to be very similar to the Edgerton contract just because of how they're made up. I just wasn't sure if, if we needed to be concerned about any of the verbiage that we currently have people in the Janesville All union right. that we might have to be taking into consideration here. Thank you. I anticipate that uh, because Edgerton does that already to some extent, that that platform is for considering that is there. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some unique points, but I anticipate, and I haven't seen any language or been part of the discussions at all, but I anticipate it's going to be a similar model to Edgerton, um, whether or not we become an expanded district. Yes, it is. It's model. They're all modeled after one another. Janesville, Edgerton, Milton. I think the only thing that uh, um, could possibly become an issue is if, you know, for whatever reason, you know, the, the greater district decides to become their own union and then things might change a little bit. Yeah. Like that. And that was discussed a little bit. Yeah. In terms of grievances and some of those things. Okay, uh, discussion and possible action regarding location of meetings for taping, public viewing of the meetings for fire commission issues. This was part of a discussion that began at the last meeting and now carrying over to this meeting. Beth. My sincere apologies, but I dropped the ball. <laughs> oh, you're I cannot ball. lie. <laughs> Um, are you prepared to have any conversation right now, and then I can I can report back after I do some more investigation? Well, just you know, our suggestion was to continue to have them here so that we could have them taped and continue with the online and on screen meetings during the well the rest of the pandemic and uh, until we have. Uh, a different environment where each of the bodies can do that on their own. I cannot speak for the rest of our board, but all but one person is here. I think from my perspective that that makes great sense as long as Inga is willing to continue her role. Um, she should be. I don't know about Jim, John, Ryan, what are your thoughts if they're, if you have any? Well, a couple of points that we've already discussed. Um, we, in theory, well, I guess directly, we've suspended the, the bylaws on this um, for this interest and concern. Um, because we're, the, the next few months are, we don't know what long term where we'll be yet. I, I'm comfortable with it being this kind of an arrangement um, for much of this year. Um, simply because we're trying to find that long-term model. If, if, if we were sitting in a position where we thought we had a long-term model, that um, this probably wouldn't make as much sense. But I totally agree that continuing on like this for the time being 
it does seem logical. And then also one of the other things that um, I just want to point out too is that I think that people have gotten used to being able to pull it up on the city's website, all of the fire information together. Um, and I don't want to break that up with the, especially since we're going to be working with Mueller and we're going to be talking about the referenda, I, I just feel like this is just totally open and I, I agree. I don't know if we need to, do we need to take a vote? I, my understanding is where we are right now is that we have um, indefinitely suspended the rule of right. place and I'm comfortable leaving it at that unless you want to discuss something else. I, I don't think it's necessary to go any further. The chair usually sets the time and the date of the meetings. If we just have a general consensus that we'll continue to operate our meetings out of this location, I don't see why we would need to go any further than that. Because if for whatever reason the town or the city is not available that night, then the chair can choose a different location. So I, I would say just continue leaving it to the discretion of the chair and, and requesting the facilities if they're available. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, promotion, selections, and opinion of fire staff. Chief Parker. Um, at this time, um, I was like to okay to hold off the pinning ceremony until next month. Uh, we're not quite ready for that yet, but uh, we're very close. Um, but I would like to announce the, the individuals that were promoted. Um, it was talked about in previous meetings that uh, we need help with um, command staff and um, the more better structure of the fire department. And it was suggested to Go ahead and keep things going as normal, and so I did. Uh, so I'd like to announce that um, we had two individuals, two lieutenants promoted as captains. That would be Rob Doxey and Mitch Severson. Uh, we also had uh, four firefighters promoted to lieutenant. Uh, that is Brandon Fry, Trent Gerber, Chris Amat, and Derek Bonkowski. Um, we also had a huge thank you to those folks for showing interest and willing to step up and help with uh, you know, keeping the fire department rolling. Yeah. Well, could you send us those names? Absolutely. Jenny, would that be better? Or well, I could announce it again if you'd like me to. If we, could, if we could just, Jenny, you'll have those in the minutes. Yep. Yeah. But we wouldn't get those for the month. I can send them to you in an email. Okay. Thank you. No, I just want to make sure that everybody that would be looking at this is part of mm -hmm. no. I can say it again if you'd like me to. Um, Lieutenant Rob Doxey was promoted to captain. Lieutenant Mitch Severson was was, report, was uh, promoted to captain, and then Brandon Fry, Trent Gerber, Chris Amat, and Derek Pankowski was promoted to uh, lieutenant. Yes, congratulations. Yeah, that's very exciting. That's cool. That is exciting. So next month, we're mm -hmm. expecting that we'll have this ceremony. Yeah, we're going to obviously let all of our members know, say, okay, this is uh, it's next month. Um, please inform your family and have invite them if they like. Uh, so hopefully uh, members of their family can pin them yeah. if they mm -hmm. want to. Could somebody reach out to the courier as well? Sure. sure. So that we can have it in the paper? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a few members that have can't, uh, come off probation, so I'd like to have them come as well. That would be great. Yeah. And do we want to like have refreshments, or are we not doing that yet? Um, that's up to you guys. We can. We can. Just don't put Beth in charge of it because she'll <laughs> blow it <laughs> off until the very last second. <laughs> well, we hope to have a few family members here and those like we have at times in the past had. And, right. Um, but I do want to say I appreciate you working on that and being able to accomplish that. For one, I, uh, I know how difficult it is with staffing and everything, but that you were able to accomplish at least putting these in place, I, I appreciate that. Staffing update under new business. Um, I just wanted to, so everybody knew that unfortunately we've had one uh, full-time member uh, put in their resignation. Um, they felt that they needed to uh, move on to something different, uh, different fire department. So um, obviously we have to do what we have to do. We uh, put the posting together, updated it, and um, put it out to 
multiple, multiple um, forms as far as social media, um, basically all the local uh, technical colleges. Uh, we put it on um, government jobs, uh, the city and the townships put it on their websites. We appreciate a lot. Uh, we put it on our website and obviously word of mouth. Uh, we've also you know, put it out to different groups uh, as far as the administrative assistant group and, and firefighters of Wisconsin. So it's out there. Uh, obviously we're gonna be hoping for the best and you know, hopefully we get some uh, interest in it. But um, it's a challenge and I think uh, we did some looking and almost every large fire department in the, in the state of Wisconsin is currently hiring. Um, so it's a huge challenge uh, to compete with uh, wages and benefits and everything. So um, I know I don't have to tell you all that, but it, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, one of the full-time firefighter paramedics. Yep. Okay. Any questions? Uh, discussion and possible action regarding the department need to be and Chief Parker. You can be running the this popular, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> so I don't know if you all know or don't know. We currently have a, a UTV or all train vehicle that we use to assist us with fighting fresh fires and doing rescues. Um, it's set up for do both at the same time. Uh, that piece of equipment is currently 15 years old. Um, over the past couple of years, it's been giving us some, some issues. Um, and I think it would be best if we try and replace that before it's um, not usable at all. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> those things have gone up tremendously in price, uh, but uh, I guess luckily um, we could use 2% uh, money for that, so we wouldn't have to touch the budget for that. Uh, if you're looking to replace that with something that could uh, haul more people, a current one you can haul two. Uh, if you're looking more towards something that could haul four or more, uh, the equipment that we have in the back to help us with the firefighting and uh, rescues is uh, very new. Uh, it's something that we got on a grant a couple of years ago, so we just, re you know, switch it over to that. The current value of that right now is between five and six thousand as current condition. Um, the sticker shock of a new one um, is in the mid to high twenties, close to thirty thousand. Um, but again, that is something that. 2% uh, can be used for, um, so I'm coming to the commission tonight to see if we could um, have the okay to replace that piece of equipment. So you're talking about the Polaris Ranger, the 6x6? Yep. So you're trying to replace it with an equivalent like vehicle? Do you want a 6x6? I don't think they make that in a crew cab if you want the, the two seats. The I think the crew cab would be more important than the 6x6 uh, okay. for the most part. The cargo that we'd have in the back that would it'll be able to handle without an issue. It'll fit in the smaller yeah. cargo box? Yeah. Did you put a gurney on the back of that one or no? It is an integrated with that whole thing. Okay. I wasn't sure if that's a separate unit or how no, that's all one counts. thing. Okay. We used to have two two separate units but um, we upgraded it so we could we wouldn't have to change it back and forth because you never know when you're gonna need either one of them. So are you looking to stay with the same brand then? Another one like it? We are looking at a, uh, uh, three different ones. Okay. Um, we're, we're definitely weighing our options on which one's going to be better. Uh, so there's our there's a, a Polaris, a Can Am, and a, a Bobcat brand that's out there. Uh, we're looking at, like I said, all three of them. Uh, for the most part, they're very close in price. Um, you know, within a few thousand dollars of each other. So. I would be interested in maybe looking for one that's, you know, one or two <coughs> years old that's still under warranty so that you're not paying that full price for one, you know, because right now, because the price is right around 30 grand for them, mm -hmm. you can pick them up for right around 17 to 20 if they're about a year or two old and have less than 100 hours on them. So it might be advantageous to try to look for one through dealership, get a new warranty on it, and ensure that we're not having to pay full price for someone else's mistake. So... Um, you know, so just like a vehicle, when you drive it off a lot, it loses a lot of value, mm -hmm. and this doesn't get used nearly as much as your, your usual equipment does, correct? That's correct. So I hate to invest a lot of money in something where the prices are always a premium, and, you know, it's going to be used maybe 25 to 30 times out of the year um, between training and actual use on, on a brush fire. So that's what I would recommend. Look for one that's it's pre-owned, but it's in good shape. It has low hours, well-maintained, 
um, they're available. It's just a matter of they trying are. to find one um, locally. I just worry about, you know, reliability and not knowing what's been done with that thing prior to us receiving it. So. Yep, I understand. I, I'm not as concerned about used versus new. Um, but most of the ones you mentioned, are, I think they're all made by Ernestal Rand anyway. But um, until you get into something like John Deere Gators or somebody else that manufactures that. Um, do we pull other things like some water rescue equipment around with the UTV? What, what it has the capabilities of that. Um, we, it'd be a very rare that we would do that, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. We do have a, a piece of ice rescue equipment or water rescue equipment uh, that we could pull that with um, for, you know, putting people on and, you know, pulling them to safety or to an ambulance or to wherever they need to go. I think it would make sense for a, a four-person capacity one. I mean, I could imagine that there would be, even if it wasn't four bodies on it, mm -hmm. it, it might be for something else you're carrying right. or transporting. Right. Um, well, need a lot of so I, I'm not surprised that you'd be interested in that option. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's a four-wheel drive? Yes. I guess I'd be comfortable approving a dollar amount, and if it works within that dollar amount, great. If we need to, if there's nothing available mm -hmm. to the standards and specs that the fire department needs, mm -hmm. then come back, and then we can approve a different amount if it's necessary to, you know, raise that that dollar amount. Okay. But does the manufacturer include the trailer? Does it get trailers? It does. Does our current trailer work for a um, special I was going to make a suggestion that the money that we got from your old one to purchase a new trailer, to be honest with you, that was going to be my suggestion. Or if we're looking to do a raise, does that then still make your trailer something that I suppose we could, oh sorry, um, my question was about trailering. Mm -hmm. um, so if we are looking to dealers, then we would still be selling this one outright. The, our current vehicle. Potentially. It wouldn't be a trade-in. I'm not saying it couldn't be, that's for sure. Um, I'm just looking at all options. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so I've heard several different things about uh, different ways to go about this. And if we look at it as an amount of money in terms of doing any of these, what would be the highest amount that you would look at? <coughs> Uh, if you go that route, or if you're requiring a look at trying to find a used vehicle, uh, what are we asking Jeremy to come back with for the May meeting? Are we asking for an amount or a description of used versus new? Uh, I'm, I'd probably just be comfortable doing the dollar amount and then whatever he finds within that range we'll work with. If there's nothing reasonable within that range for the specifications that we need, then I would suggest he comes back and we'll reevaluate the dollar amounts. If we have to go up, then we go up. But um, I would say, do we, need, do we need to add any additional equipment to it or are you going to be able to remove the old equipment that's on the vehicle to the new equipment? Um, we might have to add some lighting to it. Okay. So I would say... Uh, do we have an estimate about how much the lighting might cost? Are we looking like 1200 right around there? Um, I would say probably closer to 2000 would be awesome. Okay. Well, price would go up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll make a motion to authorize a budgeted amount for a UTV of $28,000. Second. To include all the equipment needed. Um, to outfit it. Second. Any discussion? I, I guess um, I'll, I'll just toss this in. I don't, don't mind you know, looking to see whether we find a, a, a used vehicle or not. My tendency would be to go with new. Um, this isn't the kind of vehicle that you find was only driven by a little old lady in Pasadena or, or, or something like that. Um, you haven't been to Arizona recently, yeah. have you? Well, that's true. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's, that's true. Um, but I'm, I'm comfortable with John's motion anyway. Um, you know, let's give it a go and okay. see what's there. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, look, look, look for real quality. And I, I think 
my message would be don't be afraid to come back and say um, we're not finding in that used market what we're looking for. I appreciate that. And I have a couple of comments. Um, first, I, I, I adamantly support maintaining the equipment we use in our department now. So if this is logical to update at this time, you know, per se, a scheduled replacement, I, I support that completely. Um, and then secondly, so do I understand the motion is that this will, th these monies would fit within budget, whether that takes 2% monies or not, that this is, this is within, uh, fitting within a budget. Yes. If it takes 2% to do that, <coughs> so be it, but. Yes, um, I guess I would just kind of caveat is, is I, I'm not as concerned about the pre-owned. It would be really nice to be a good steward to the taxpayer and show that we're doing our due diligence to find the best value. Mm -hmm. And the best value may be a pre-owned vehicle that has very, very low miles that was taken care of and maintained. And it's clearly evident in the records that was traded in at the dealership it was sold to. Sure. So I, I just want to ensure that we're doing that legwork before we're writing a blank check, spending whatever money it takes to, to buy this vehicle for the limited use that it gets. Absolutely. So I will definitely look, that's for sure. But I, I'm not going to hold you to it if you find something within that price range of 28000 Okay. That's the idea, that you have a parameter to work within. Understood. I'll try not to take up too much time, but on the topic of the 2% account, can you give us a little education? According to our balance sheet, we've got $163,532 in there. What other types of, of expenditures would be coming out of that 2% account? As of right now, the only thing that I'm aware of that we have coming out of that is what money has been approved for the current um, fire inspector company that we are using. Um, and to my knowledge, that's it. Um, I don't have anything else allocated for those funds. And for further education, how do those 2% funds go into it? Like, how do we achieve those funds? We achieve, we achieve those by uh, fire inspecting, um, you know, doing uh, pub ed, doing, um, you know, safety training, things like that, but mainly for doing our fire inspections. So anything to do with fire suppression, those monies can be used for, correct? To a point, yes. So if we need to replace an engine, could a portion of those dollars go to that? Yes. So it might be a, of advantage one that comes time in the next couple of years to replace a vehicle other than an ambulance for fire suppression, that those monies would be available to a certain degree. I mean, not the whole account, but some of them could be used to offset the cost of a more expensive piece of equipment as well, keeping that in mind. Which is inevitable, because it sounds like we have a tender that needs replacing down the road. In the future, yeah. yeah. Anything else? Okay. We'll go back to the vote. The motion was to uh, have up to $28,000 to buy a used or new uh, UTV and equipment. Um, and if that is not workable, you're expected to come back on uh, May 18th and update it. Can um, I ask a point? I'm sorry. Um, does this motion include the resale of our old UTV? I was going to make a separate motion okay. on that. If that's All right. right. Thank you. Yeah, it doesn't. I, and, and that motion includes that this fits within a, a budget? In other words, it's not new budgeted dollars? Correct. It's with... It's in the 2% uh, budget. You want that specified in the motion? As long as it's made clear that we're not adding dollars to uh, an existing budget. budget. To be purchased in the 2%, using 2% monies. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. If I could, I'd like to try to draft a motion on uh, the, the trailer um, just thinking off the top of my head, uh, a motion might be once we've secured a new UTV and know what we might need for a trailer or best need for a trailer, that the proceeds from the sale of the old UTV would be used towards a new trailer 
and any unused funds from that sale would then go into the general funds of our budget or treasury or our budget. I'll second that. Well, if we sell the old UTV, so I made a motion and there's a second. Yeah. So if this, if it sells for 6000 and we end up spending 3000 for a trailer, there's $3,000 left. And, and that, that money goes in back into our general fund. Well, there's a, there's an actually a line item on our budget that says sale of equipment. Yeah. So I'm, I imagine it would go into that line item for sale of old equipment. Yeah, okay, but, so that's, but yeah, it'd be usable for that's whatever. The intent, that's the yeah. intent. Okay. And uh, if there's any other need for those do do dollars or those extra dollars, then we'll have a discussion at that time. You know. But then that allows the chief to not only secure UTV, but he might work out at, sa at the same time, ironically, or nearly the same time if he's working on both, to jump on both and be done with it. That, that's my intent to, with this motion. We get that, Jenny? Okay, do you want to read it back once? The money to be used for UTV is purchased all proceeds from the sale of the old UTV, which has been used for another and not recommended for sale in the general fund. Oh, what about the old trailer? Is that the sale of the old trailer too, Brian? Um, yeah, so the sale of the old UT UTV and old trailer, okay. would, would the monies would be directed in that manner. And we'll just say go back into the budget. We won't specify the old equipment. Well, the, the account line that's used, or sale of, sale of, equipment. Sale of equipment. Yeah. That would be, for the time being, the most proper place to put it. Okay. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Bill? Yeah, I yeah. yeah, Bill said that. <clears throat> Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks, Jean. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> and Chief Parker, discussion and possible action regarding proposed review of shared paramedic service MOU between uh, Edgerton Fire District and Milton, Milton Township uh, for Attorney Brooks to read. Things have uh, moved pretty quickly on this uh, on this subject. Um, yeah. Just a couple weeks ago, uh, the fire chiefs of both Milton and Edgerton Fire Department got together and had some discussions about the possibility of training paramedics. Paramedics yeah, uh, in the near future. Uh, this was to hopefully <coughs> help or uh, impair the paramedic level uh, with both departments 24/7. Uh, Due to some recent little resignations on both departments, um, obviously we're going to be, could potentially be struggling for paramedics in the future. So we are trying to brainstorm together, trying to think of some ideas that maybe could help us with that. Uh, one of these suggestions was obviously training paramedics, um, which would include the possibility of um, you know either theirs or our paramedic uh, going to the other's call uh, if needed. Um, and at the edge of town. Uh, it may also include a what we call a chase vehicle that would have to be fully equipped um, to the paramedic level, uh, such as our current ambulance. Uh, so <coughs> there's a lot of uh, discussions, a lot of things that we have to check on. Uh, we have to have communication with the state, uh, our medical control doctors, and um, obviously staff uh, to make sure everything is, everybody is on the same page. Um, we haven't gotten the okay yet from the state. Uh, we have made contact with them. Uh, they haven't completely gotten back to us yet. We've had conversations with our medical control, uh, but nothing has been decided yet. Um, so I'm making you all aware of that tonight, that that could be in uh, a discussion. Um, so I, I believe that's uh, something that we all need to talk about uh, to see if that's something that we may or may not be interested in doing. So I think if I could, the, a lot of that discussion you just mentioned is more directly related to the concept of the chase vehicle. Uh, yes. Um, and I understand, like, the hospital has a couple of extra chase vehicles. Not anymore. 
sign anymore. Just on that up. Okay. So there'd have to be some brainstorming on how to acquire a chase vehicle if you're going to implement one. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have had any serious discussions about that and how that might impact Edgerton and or Milton departments. Not, not exactly. I mean, we've, we've made a lot more discussions. And like I said, before we could even move forward, move forward with this, um, we'd have to get the planning approval from the city for it to do this. Um, I, I personally believe and I hear what they're going to say. Um, and if they do approve it, then obviously we would have to change our operating, operational plan uh, just like Edgerton would to do the same to move this move this forward. Um, I imagine the, the, the challenging part is sharing staff between separate yeah, entities. Have, correct. They would have to get um, those people at, from both departments. They would have to be approved through the Joint Our Word Committee of Heads. Um, I don't know if uh, Mr. Gore has anything that he'd like to add to any of that. Yeah, so basically what would happen if the There's a term for this being able to cross service. Is that on? Yeah. All right. <coughs> so, in order to start this out, um, you have to get permission from the state. Three years ago, we petitioned the state to become a paramedic level. In that, uh, the operational guideline, a single paramedic, and we have to cover that 24 hours a day, 24 7. So, for two different communities to share the same paramedic, uh, the paramedic coordinator, she couldn't answer that question. So she actually has had to take it to their board, or I don't know exactly what it is, but the, the state uh, medical director to get guidance on that. So if that would come down, everybody from Edgerton and Milton that hold an EMT license, we'd have to cross credential. We would have to have two operational plans uh, I don't know if we had to do a feasibility study, but that took about a month and a half to do. The operational plan is another couple of months. Once that's approved, you have to bring it in together. I believe Chief would have to look into the insurances. Um, then we have to start worrying about uh, how we're going to staff that vehicle. Uh, one cardiac monitor is about $30,000. So, and Edgerton uses one that is not... Um, it's a, we use Zoll, they use LightPak. So there's two different ones. So they would, you know, essentially have to have two different uh, cardiac monitors along with the medications. Uh, now, as far as a controlled substance, um, it is the same doctor. So we use, we use the same DEA number, but the loss of control, if that would go from one department to the other, people getting into that, I don't know where that would go. That would be another thing that the, the medical director would have to, to sign off on. Um, he would have to approve it also. Mind you, it, we do work off of his license. Um, I Trying to talk to him, he's trying to stay out of the politics. He said he would, he would do his best ability to help us figure this out. So... Can I play devil's advocate for sure. just a moment, Pete? So if I'm understanding correctly, we have a short, we all, both departments have a shortage of EMTs. And so, Paramedic. I'm sorry, that's, and what I heard was P EMT license and I was very confused. So, right. so okay. the memorandum does say EMTs. So that's kind of concerning with me because are we going to have to, how do I want to say this? cover each other that way if anything it needs to be just that paramedic level well and that's, that's where i was going with it so so this is my question knowing that we are moving forward but i realize that we don't have it in in finished yet is the current issue because if we have coverage here in milton and they don't have coverage in edgerton for a particular call, what would happen currently if we have a call for us? So let's just take Edgerton off the table. Okay. If we have a call for us and our paramedic goes out, yep. then who comes into the station? 
Well, we currently staff with three during the week, or excuse me, four during the week, five. So our first ambulance, that it has to be that paramedic on that no matter what goes out the door. Our secondary ambulance or a backup ambulance is staffed as an EMT basic. It is. So guys like this that are not on the primary, um, if they both have an EMT license, they can go and respond in our backup ambulance and they can work off to the highest uh, license there. So if me and Taylor go out, she's a basic, I'm a medic, we can use that second ambulance as a paramedic rig and uh, provide that care. So if we would start uh, using the paramedic uh, chase vehicle, I guess if that's what you want to call it, our paramedic goes to Edgerton to cover them. Now that leaves our ambulance staffed with one, possibly two, <coughs> excuse me. And once again, that was something that the state, that ambulance when it leaves or when it transports a person has to have a paramedic on it. So if our chase medic goes to Edgerton, that ambulance technically has to be out of service unless we rewrite that, that operational plan and, and go from there. So there's a lot of moving parts into this. Well, and it, on a, honestly, any given moment could be, I mean, I've been at an Edgerton Fire District meeting where they had four calls within a half an hour of each other. So I don't, I realize that we're both in dire straits at this point, but the reality is, is that I don't, I don't know how we could even take care of the what ifs here. Right, and that's why we, we had very preliminary discussions, I would say, Chief, correct? Um, there's a lot that needs to be thought out when it comes to this. Because this also gets into billing. Yes. Two entities cannot bill. So who's ever ambulance is doing the transporting, they're gonna bill and the other one is out. Well, that's kind of what I was asking is that it's almost like, so we're taking call and I realize that our our um, run times would be much longer if we're sitting in Milton, get a call on the other side of Edgerton. So I realized that that really cuts into the actual call. So are we, for all intents and purposes right now, I realize that we're starting at the state level and taking it down, but are we looking at, because I couldn't open my document, I'm sorry. Um, are we looking at having a Milton person sitting in the Edgerton department? No. Okay. Got it. Well, Ed Edgerton also does a lot of transfers. So that would be another, if that's part of it. Oh yeah, Edgerton does do, well, Edgerton does transfers. Right, when they, so they, they they're ambulance. with their paramedics, so it's their choice. I would hope operationally that that's not the way that, that, that they'd be staffing their resources because an EMT basic can run a transfer, right? What's that? EMT basic can run a transfer? Uh, or does it depend on the no, need of that patient? No, there has to be a paramedic. Really, that yep. would have to be something that would be okay. Uh, so the without mayor, getting into it, the mayor and I were at the last Edgerton Fire District meeting, and they talked a little bit about this. And this transport discussion came up at their board meeting. Um, mm -hmm. the, the chief made it clear in my mind that the prior, the lowest priority would be their transport business. If they don't have enough staff um, to do other business that, as paramedics. Um, transport's not going to happen because it's the lowest on the totem pole. Um, so that's how that's what he expressed to his board. Um, and I'm just talking about the transfer conversation. I guess in my mind, the biggest thing I have a concern with is the the limited resources both communities have, and then taking the one resource that we have available that day and spreading it so thin, it's not viable to either party. So I get that we're trying to make it work with the least amount of resources, but taking that resource and cutting a slice of cheese in half is not helping either community between response time and ensuring that the care is given to that person in need when they need it. So I, I, I have a really difficult time, you know, I appreciate you putting the work into it to try to figure out how to make it work, but it really just comes down to trying to fill those positions that are difficult to fill. You know, paramedics are a high skill sought after from a lot of departments, they're paying, you know, $25 an hour in a different department, it's gonna be hard to retain those higher skilled positions. And that's not, this is not gonna fix the problem, this is a band-aid for the temporary. Fixing the problem is ensuring that medics have a competitive wage here, which is gonna cost money. 
So what is the ultimatum? Is it continually fund more to try to bring more people in? That it seems to be the only way as every other department raises their wages to try to compete with each other, we have to get competitive as well and we have to pay those same wages to be able to accommodate the long term. And unfortunately, until a statewide system is in place where wages are the same for every department, we're competing with each other and cutting each other out of business. So whether, whether I get on my soapbox or not, I, I can be clear on what the Edgerton Fire District, Fire Protection District Board voted on, is to recommend that uh, this board look at sending this request in some form of an MOU to their attorney, the Fire Milton, City of Milton, Town of Milton Fire Commission, after the questions that have been raised have been dealt with. So that is the question before you is once all of these questions that everyone has are dealt with, would you authorize the attorney to review it? It's not to make a decision t tonight on whether it's a good idea or not a good idea. It's if you can get those questions answered, would you authorize the, your attorney to look at it? So I think Maybe that's where there's some right more. They have so, more answers. So you could vote to it. at a future date mm -hmm. authorize the attorney to look at it, um, dependent upon staff and commission's questions being answered. Right. right. So that's really what 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 the question is. Not how that what the MOU looks like right now, which it, which has been approved by the state for other districts and was approved. Um, so I, it was during COVID though, right? So I don't know if there's a different process now than what it was before. Does that make sense? That makes a lot more sense because yeah. Yeah. Um, what I understood, this just came across my desk is I'm not exactly sure what is going on. Right, that right, right. Puts right. a lot of liability so does, does that, and, and Brian, is that how you understood it? Yeah, it is. Um, okay. So there's two strong points here. This is um, literally and deliberately proposed as a Band-Aid. It's understood that it's a Band-Aid. This is nothing that should continue indefinitely by any means whatsoever. So it is clearly a Band-Aid to a very serious problem that um, Edgerton spoke of, it's, it's serious for both of us, our departments, and this is one tool that they um, suggested looking at to try to get us at least to some point where we can find a better solution to more permanent staffing or availabilities. Um, Having said that, that this is proposed as a Band-Aid, it's proposed as a Band-Aid because it's so serious they need something addressed now. So this is not something um, that, from what I, was introduced to me anyway, that was acceptable to, to decide on this three or four months from now. This needs to be decided on one way or another in the next month or two um, because there's a serious problem right now that a Band-Aid's needed for. But Brian, what I heard you say was that it's important to decide on this in the next month or two, yet we don't have any information from the state level nor from the medical director to be able to make those decisions. And we might not get them at all. I'm just saying we can't ask the chief to say, well, sometime in the next few months, we hope to be able to figure this out. If, this, if we're going to look at this Band-Aid, um, we need to see if we can get this done in a month or two. And if we can't, we can't. But we got we, we need to take it serious and discuss this and get information on it and put this together enough to decide, is, does this make sense for the time being or not? Chief, what, how do you, you see that? Is 
And in this preliminary draft version here, it just says if we can't help, help each other at any given moment, we don't help each other. We're not available. So if something got put together eventually, I'm sure it will still have the language. If we just are short staff and we can't help one or another, it's, it's not going to happen even though we have this agreement in place. I think that this is a very good temporary step um, it, we we really do need to to move quickly on this it I mean we just have to move quickly on this there's a shortage and that that's pretty much how it is people in our community are expecting to have service people in the Edgerton community are expecting to have service we're already working together and so I guess I just kind of feel like I think that we need to go ahead and have our attorney take a look at this after, you know, knowing that you will be getting this information coming down the pipe. So, I mean, I guess I'm entertain a motion. I'm ready to entertain a motion that we have our attorney take a look at all of this. And I'll second that. Uh, motion to accept to make so. Well, we're in discussion. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, please. Steve, go ahead. Yes, you can. You can discuss it now. <coughs> so, um, I don't know exactly when, but there it's called Act 97. Uh, it is for communities that are under 10,000 or rural fire department. What that does is that ambulance can provide care to the level of the EMTs that are, are riding it. So if we would look into that, and I've had some comment or had some talk with the state, and that's something that they do not have to make a, a, a judgment on. It's something that we would have to take back to all the communities that we respond to and our medical director. So we go back down to, say, an EMT basic service. So we, 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 we kind of take one step backwards. But if I'm working or we have a medic on, which we do majority of the time, you know, barring what's going on. Right now we do. But say once we lose that person, if we have to act as a basic or an AMT ambulance, we can do that in our primary ambulance. If there is a medic on that, then it can be, it's fully staffed, we can act as a medic. The only downfall is, is once you drop down to that, that EMT basic or that IV tech level, when it comes time to uh, bill the patient, even though you had a medic on there and you used all your ACLS uh, two monies or, or drugs, everything like that, insurance companies have a hard time paying for that higher level of care because we are still considered a basic ambulance. So just to clarify, this is there is not a hybrid option available. So it's it's not that whatever, however the personnel staffing the ambulance arrive at the scene, mm -hmm. you can't bill to that level? You can try, but because we would be considered a basic or a advanced EMT, whichever one we would go to, when you try to bill it for that higher level of care, there might be some pushback because of us trying to bill higher than what our charter says that we are for that ambulance. And I realize that, I, I, I believe I heard you correctly, but what you're saying is that we would then lose our paramedic status and we would go down to a basics. So it's not a hybrid. It's not whatever the ambulance presents with the personnel on it. Yes, at it, that is. Per, it per, is. At that point yep. in time. So, if so our two, over, overall designation as a department, we don't lose that designation. We, well, we would be considered a BLS department. On paper, on paper we would be a basic life support And so is uh, that ambulance. a state decision? It, oh, nope. I mean, when I talked to uh, Elizabeth up there, 
if uh, basically what would happen is we would have to go to the, all the jurisdictions that we uh, service and our medical director, we would have to explain this, everybody would have to sign an MOU petition, whatever you want to call it, saying we understand the ambulance is no longer a paramedic level service, but if they can staff it at that, you would get that paramedic level service. And I'd love to see it the other way around. Yes. I'd love to see it as that Milton is a paramedic level yeah. service unless it cannot be due to constraints of personnel. Yeah, unfortunately they won't let us do that. That's my question. Yeah, I know. Who's who's making that decision? Uh, state <laughs> medical director, how's that? Okay. <laughs> May I have his name and phone number, please? <laughs> Just kidding. So um, that is another option. I'm not a real big, well, I don't know what to do. We've been struggling. I don't know that it is a last resort, and I'm sorry to, to kind of jump in here because I realize that I'm not in the in the thick of it day in and day out, but I'm here to tell you that that, because it's already in place, is something that's doable. The only reason that I wouldn't be in favor of it, Jeremy, is because of that very reason, that we then lose our paramedic designation. And we've worked really hard. You all have worked very hard to attain that, and we greatly appreciate it. As a community, we greatly appreciate it. But at this point in time, and I realize that Milton may be able to handle it for right now, but who's to say? And that's something that's doable right now. Act 97 is already in place. This could take a while, especially because I haven't even opened it. I mean, well, I couldn't open it. We have it. the wrong one anyway. Oh. That's the other. I mean, we have two measles. So I guess that's why I was playing devil's advocate is because... Your time is extremely valuable, and that, that may not always come across that way, but I understand the chief, Chief Maury, Chief Lucas, Jenny, all the staff, their time is valuable. Most of them are part-time. The fact that they're spending months creating documents that we may not approve because of whatever reason, I don't want their time to be wasted because we have an idea that may or may not work, but is it really worth looking? Is the core of the concept worth looking into for the band-aid that it's going to provide versus the time, the money, and the outcome that's still going to happen as a result of the decision? So I go back to my main point is if the agreement is not a quality agreement to begin with because it doesn't truly fix the problem and it, and it creates more of a constraint than, uh, that already exists, then why should we look at this agreement? Why don't we look would look at the cause of the problem? If we're going to do it, I would rather start looking at the cause of the problem than the Band-Aid that might prevent, you know, an immediate fix with flexing staffing a little bit better, but still constraining the staffing model for both of our departments, depending on where that resource needs to go. I think one thing that we need to keep in mind here is that we are... We're going to have a meeting next week about our application. And when it comes down to all of this stuff that is happening all across the state and the country, I, I don't want to lose my paramedic service. I don't want to go back. We, we have worked incredibly hard for it. And just as we were just discussing, there's not a there's not a big pool out there. So we walk away from that paramedic service and then are we not gonna is who's gonna who's gonna come in? That they're gonna go everywhere else. So what do you mean they're gonna go everywhere else? They'll go where they can have that. Where they can you mean they'll move? They'll go to another department. Employee level of paramedic. Oh, oh I, th I thought you were talking about our, our community, our citizens. Oh, no, no, right, no. I'm talking about our EMTs, or I'm sorry, paramedics. They, they are now going to local places. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, respect what John had to say in terms of the value of the time that gets put into this. At the same time, I think we need to be exploring all of the options. Um, and if we don't continue to explore this option, essentially we're taking one of the options off the table. Um, so I would be in favor of the motion uh, to continue to explore it. Uh, if it doesn't pan out and it's not a quality Band-Aid, 
um, you know, we don't want to put on a Band-Aid that is going to infect the wound. So uh, I, I would support the motion. I would like a little bit more feedback between the two chiefs that are here tonight, Chief Maury and Chief Parker. Do you believe from your staffing models that you've seen and looking at this document, this is going to benefit both of our communities inevitably, like with the band-aid that's in place. Is this going to truly give us the, the short come advantage we need to be able to flex staff? Uh, Chief Maury, would you like to comment on anything? Yeah, I'm all about whatever we do. Um, we need to do something very soon, and it needs to be done legally and everything. But we 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 do we need to do something soon, just because of where well the whole nation. I mean, we have all these fire departments. Janesville's trying to hire. Uh, normally you get hundreds of applications. They got about 30 the last time. So I don't know what's, I don't know what it is, but we need to look at some different avenues. I'm not saying one's going to be better than the other. Um, they're both going to take some time, and I just hope we can get something in line sooner than later to protect our, protect the ambulance. I mean, we're here to serve the community, take care of our, our guests and our and people that live in this city so we have to do what we do best to get get them covered so the okay <laughs> okay thank so you for both of you um, and everyone's uh, opinions to be shared but at this point we need to move on because we we do have everyone's opinion but we do need to decide whether or not to have this reviewed by our lawyer this does not Agreeing to have it reviewed by your lawyer does not mean that you agree or disagree with the proposal or the MOU. It just means that you want it to be reviewed by a lawyer to see that it meets the legality of the proposal. There are many steps, as Anissa had said, and as Jeremy had said, and as Pete had said. There are lots of things to be looked into yet, and then we still need to come back and uh, agree on things once they are looked into more uh, clearly, both at a state level and a local level. May I so, ask for a clarification? So at its current level, what we're looking at is, is giving this to our lawyer. Correct not knowing whether the state will sign off on it. Correct. I mean, it's just to approve the debt. I understand, but it's going to cost us money yeah. to, to do that. And it's going to cost time. And so, and time. And so my question is, could we possibly have an amendment of the, of the um, motion so that it, when, because it could be in the off time between meetings. If approval is given at the two levels that we've been advised that need to happen now, medical director and state level, could it then be put out to the to the lawyer? Knowing that it might save us a dollar or two. No, and I get that, but what if they shoot it down? Correct. Right, right. so the, the point is if we wait until after that decision comes through, then we can send the document if, it is, if it's a go from the state. It forces waste your guys' time preparing everything, making sure it's, it's ready to go and have clarification from the state, and the state says no, and, you know, the attorney's already reviewed it, and we're talking about it again at the next meeting. So...
all that I was asking was for an amendment of the motion to be that provided we get those two okays, that then this goes out to the lawyer. And then we would be ready for the next meeting if in the interim those two things happen. Is that an amendment to the motion? I didn't make the original motion, so. No, no, but it doesn't matter. You can amend the motion if you'd like to. I, and then I'll. I really think that we need to just keep moving here. This is a, this is, we're going to be working together, helping each other out, and it's just a matter of making sure that the attorney likes the language here. But the attorney costs money. But this well, is not a complete course. document either, right? So. Of course, but why do we have an attorney if we're not going to allow her to help us write these things? She might come back and say, no, this isn't enough. We got to do this too. You just don't know those things. Well, I, I see this discussion really of all about, we could, we could do this in mutual aid already. We don't need this document at all. Yep. This, what this document primarily serves is the, the ability to build each other back and find a legal means to do that. I mean, that's all, I know that's oversimplifying it, but that's the goal, that's the goal of the MOU is to, at discretion, be able to do this and be able to build a service back for paramedic level service. That's, that's what I understand the whole thing to be about. So, again, I seconded the motion here. And okay. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Not happily, but motion passes. Well, I need a clarification again. I'm sorry, you guys, but I, which documents are we talking about? I could not open it. So is it this multiple page one that you gave? Yes. Yeah, okay, I will now read it after tonight's meeting. Okay. It's uh it's an actually an interim agreement with the EMS mutual aid back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I thought I had give, the wrong one. I thought I had given you the wrong one oh, because okay. you were looking at it funny. I thought maybe I gave you the wrong thing. So all right. Uh, moving on. Fire chief's report. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know when our contract is up? Because that's a really important date. Because you cannot end it prior or after. So while we were using management services from the city of Janesville under that intergovernmental agreement, um, we, we authorized going to the building service that Janesville used at that time and, and leaving the one we had at the moment. So I'm not sure who, who the company is that's doing it now. Anders, yes. Um, and I think, okay, yeah. So I, I don't think it was ever explained to us here, at least at the commission level, what the timetable was for contracts with the billing service company. So we'd have to look into that. If I have it, I will send you the time frame. Do you need a 
do you need an authorization if we're up against that? If it's look, if the date's coming within less than or close to six months, I will email you whatever the date is anyway. Okay. I'll let you know. And then what would the rule be last year? Just one time delivery? Month to month, you said, and every time that it's within that year, it's going to be six months? Yeah, that would be good. Uh, back to the service calls for just a minute. Uh, uh, the mentioned the 90. Do you have a, any sense what was the peak number in terms of uh, calls in a day? Okay. Um, you know, that's that's a kind of a critical number for us to. Uh, just in terms of our informational purpose, because that's the kind of thing that uh, folks may be asking us uh, as we're uh, kind of building the case with the public for uh, changes and, and increase in budget, regardless of which way we go, uh, is uh, their understanding um, that this is a really stressed um, staffing situation. Yeah. Thank you. Um, just to backtrack real quickly, um, before Andres was was it Life Quest? Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It se it seems to me that they weren't there. They weren't returning as much as we. Yeah, they were pretty low. Yeah. Seventy eight to eighty three. Seem yeah. I didn't feel like we were getting our bills paid. That's one of the reasons why we left. They were just right. not getting collections, you know. Yeah. It was like 30, 40 percent. Yeah. They were so we negotiate when they first started with LifeQuest. They we negotiated a higher. They took a higher percentage, is what it was. Um, they worked with Edgerton right now, and Edgerton does not have a problem with LifeQuest at all. And so, was their billing system user friendly for you to work through? Yes. Okay. They're both our Andres and LifeQuest is pretty much the same. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, president's report. <laughs> okay. Um, so we've been meeting again, and the only real update I guess we have is that we're trying to plan um, our end of the year party. Since we didn't have a Christmas party last year because of COVID, um, we're trying to plan one for this year. We're going to do it hopefully in July. We think um, with the whole transition, maybe with Edgerton and everything, that would be a good time to get people who maybe aren't planning on going with um, on over to Edgerton. So then that way we can do all of our rewards and er, awards and retirements and everything too, and we can still celebrate with everybody. But that's the only thing we're really planning on right now. Otherwise, that's all I got. Okay. Has there been any conversation about the pancake breakfast uh, taking place this year? Um, I don't believe so. Right now we're really focusing on staffing and having people cover shifts. So, um, I'm not sure that that would be, um, like, that takes a lot of people. I remember the past years, like, I don't, when we'd have, like, 40, I don't know, a lot of people. We would have a lot of people there really early helping do all that. And we, our roster is significantly smaller now, so I think that would be really difficult. It may be a benefit to reach out to the surrounding community that would volunteer their time to help because there's a lot of retirees and people that maybe aren't directly um, association members that would be willing to donate their time to help to make it a community event. It's a huge focus point in the community on the surrounding Milton area, sure. and I think it brings a lot of the staff together and it has a lot of memories that you can make um, at a time where it's it's just about serving and uh, giving back to the community and the community coming back and appreciating appreciating that 
Sure. So. I guess I can take it back to the association. Um, we're we're going to have another meeting after this Monday of the month, and I can bring that up and see how everybody feels about that and just kind of see what everybody's feedback is and if people seem receptive and like it would be something that they would want to do or not and let you guys know what they think. Yeah, that'd that be way. great. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? No? Thanks, guys. General items. I got a general item. Might be something that we can look at for the next agenda. Um, discuss this a little with Teresa and the Chiefs about trying to have some retention uh, for our staffing uh, shortages that we have seem to have been going through the past 20 years. Uh, most recently, it's full-time staff, ensuring that they have the proper training um, and to help with retention, maybe offering uh, a, a opportunity for people to come on the department as a full-time employee and go through the paramedic training program, and we would cover the cost of the training program. And in return, they would have a work obligation of a period of, a period of time that they would serve then with the Milton, Milton Township Fire Department. Uh, I think that would be a really good benefit to not only the community, but to also foster a really good environment where we can we can provide this uh, and people can learn under that direction. So it costs about $3,000 to send somebody through the paramedic training and it's about a year long process, accelerated six months and Blackhawk down uh, in Janesville does the, the program. Um, and who else, is there another training facility, MATC? I would like to explore that as an option for um, maybe helping with this and delegate, uh, delegating a certain dollar amount each year in um, training opportunities for people as, a, as an incentive to work at the department. If maybe if we can't offer the highest wages, we can offer other incentives that will provide the certificates needed that they don't have to pay out of pocket. Sure, and I mean, we're talking $3,000 a person, so if we capped it at, let's say, $12,000 per year in training incentives um, for full-time employee, that might be a, a really nice selling point for people that are part-time now that want to become a paramedic but aren't going to pay out of pocket, might now take the opportunity to self-promote within the department, become a full-time person, and then have an obligation for service for, let's say, three years or four years after the date of their certificate completion. I think we should look at that as a viable option if we could try to talk about that on a future agenda. No, I agree. I, you know, when John brought it up, I thought that was uh, a great idea to try to get people excited and motivated by paying for some of that training. I, I don't know whether Teresa mentioned it, but um, essentially we've had to do that with our police department in terms of recruitment and the last two hires have been under that kind of framework. So, um, and so far that's worked out on, on the police side. Just as a question, what is the retention, like what is your time frame that you're needing to stay on the force after completing the training for the police department? I can't remember what it. Like three years? Yeah. I think it's three years. Yeah. The reason that I'm asking is I'm aware of other programs that it's a two-year payback. So, like, the year that they're in school, they would be employed by us, and then it's a two-year payback after that. But it, I agree. I think it would be a great topic of conversation. I'd love to see other models and how it might be working in other areas of the state or other states even. I think it's a relatively low-cost approach to a, a great benefit for the person coming on the $3,000 over the course of someone's three years. That's a pretty low... Um, cost incentive for us, but a huge benefit to the person receiving it. So ultimately, looking at every option, I think that's a strong option for us going forward. I mean, this is just kind of brainstorming, but even having like a scholarship program that yeah. the community could donate to, because even if we're looking at the firefighter, that was terrible grammar, I'm sorry, looking at the <laughs> firefighter level, paying for those that schooling as well. I mean, there's courses all involved, and so just looking at our education scholarship fund overall. We also, and in the past, we have for help with EMTB, we have helped with 
those going to Ivy Tech and Adam, they had to work with us for two, three years, I believe we had them sign, two years. And, uh, you know, back in the day, Maxine Striegel was big on that, helping people go to paramedic school, and we just never passed it. I think it's time to have it happens. I'd like it on the agenda for next month, and uh, let's see what we can what, what we can do with that. I have one thing, please. Um, the so the city has the, uh, hired this consultant, the Miller. Mm -hmm. Um, has there been any recent, in the last couple of months, any significant uh, conversations or developments on um, the help from that consultant? The town has expressed an interest in um, having some level of participation and, and um, being a partner in funding some language for a potential um, re referendum. So I, I, I want to reach out again and say the town is interesting and in being involved so we can um, go hand in hand with um, the same message and, and share cost in that. Microphone. Uh, the meeting that we just had with them a couple weeks ago and the meeting before that we had with Miller, I did tell them you were interested and you would have to reach out to them to discuss that with them. And we're um, waiting to see how, you know, where we end up, right, if there ends up being an agreement um, to move forward. So right now we're in a little bit of a, of a holding pattern. That, so, did that answer your question? Um, kind of. I, I thought I had reached out by contacting the mayor, and I know that the city council is aware of that. Um, yeah, like I can't, we can't sign a contract on behalf of the town. No, no, no. Or no. negotiate a price, or I my, think. My understanding yeah. the city was going to move forward regardless. Potentially, yeah. potentially. And, and we did, and we signed a contract just for the city what it would involve um, language and communications for the city's part of it. Well, maybe if you could give me contact information then for this consultant and I can contact them directly. Yeah, yep. Thank you. Part of the, the concern from at least where I sit is us needing to work together is extremely important, especially because half of our residents don't even know if they live in the city or the town sometimes. <laughs> so um, having one cohesive conversation is right. important. We believe that too, and so does Miller. Believe that it, um, it has to be a collaborative effort, but the language that uh, they would create for the town would be different than the language that they would create for yeah. the city. The question so. is if we can collaborate within those contracts. If we would be authorized, would the, if the city would need to authorize the collaboration efforts for the contractor to talk to us in, on behalf of your information and vice versa, that there can be cross language exchange between the two contracts. Yep, maybe that not can happen. Exchange, That's what but, yeah. we um, discussed with them, but we we couldn't speak on behalf of the town because um, this hasn't been something. Um, that's been voted on at the town level to move forward to negotiate something with Miller. So what we did tell them is that we, it was our understanding that the township was interested in um, a collaborative effort, but that um, we couldn't speak on your behalf because it was my understanding that it hasn't been voted on at the township level yet. And part of the, re part of the reason I bring it up again is that I've received questions from several people because there hasn't been any um, news delivered on the city's efforts or Miller's efforts um, that people are aware of, um, that, there's been, that there's been work or discussions. So there has been work and um, they have assisted us in doing some press releases uh, 
from the city and not necessarily directly from Miller. And so it, so the city would issue the press release after we have had discussions with Miller on wording and what is the message that we want to get out. Just because the city issues a press release does not mean that any media, social media, papers, or radio actually picks up that press release. So that um, has been part of the concern too, is that we're, we're paying for a communications consultant, but the media isn't picking it up yet. And probably because we're kind of in this transition period of we're still moving through the process and we don't have a definitive answer of exactly where we're going yet. Understanding that not having a definitive answer, and I completely hear you and, and can, can understand, I will tell you that I get the Edgerton Reporter and it's fully on page one on many weeks, the conversations that they're having. So it would be great if Milton would pick that up as well. So um, the Edgerton Reporter typically, as Brian can attest to, does have, um, they have a reporter that attends every one of those meetings. So as you can see right here, there is not a reporter that's attending our meetings. Um, certainly, uh, our agendas get sent out to the media and they get posted. I'm not saying you need to make it more interesting. Please don't. I kind of like it this way. But um, I do think as we move along further in the, in the process, this will get more attention. I know um, Al's been on the radio talking about you know, different economic development things. And sometimes this question comes up too. So, um, and I think it's important that we have um, an understanding of the message that we want to give to the public. So they understand it too. And if it's just like, well, we're still waiting, then um, we don't want to cause more confusion either. Thank you. Any other general items? Move to, move to adjourn. Second. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Reminder that the next meeting then, I did not put a location, but it will be held on May 18th at 6 p.m. here at City Hall. And a reminder too that at that time we will be voting for a new president representative of the town board i'm curious is there so anything significant about the 6 p.m does that work better for everybody yep. we works used to, for me we used to do seven but is six significant i'm in bed by seven yeah chief yeah we're uh we meet we're well over bedtime <laughs> <laughs> all right good night <clears throat>